Okay, welcome back. Welcome back to the Jiu-Jitsu Mindset. Uh, it's Pete Dealey alone today. Professor Lucas Hubo is out there working with kids at a local competition today, actually. So you have the misfortune of being just with me. From what I understand, uh, he has not brought submission coffee out to those kids out of fear that it could be considered a performance-enhancing drug. But you know, there's been no official ruling, so you can get yours at the jujitsu mindset.com. <laughs> Today, I have one of my favorite human beings with me, and we are going to continue a conversation that, you know, we've been having, I don't know, for oh, maybe a year now. Yeah. And it is Professor Jason Hawkins that's with me, and we're going to talk about his book, Light on the Gentle Art, the Jiu-Jitsu Sutras. So, Professor Hawkins, so glad you had some time today. Hey, I'm excited to be back, Pete. I've been looking forward to this for a while. Me too. And although you and I live in, with a similar vocabulary, not everybody's got the words that we talk about on the tip of their tongue. And so uh, today, when we talk about your book, Light on the Gentle Art, um, we're going to talk about some of the sutras that you wrote. And before we get into the content of your sutras, could you just remind people you know, what a sutra is? Because um, yeah. We're going to use that word, and I want to yeah, make sure so, we're all on the same page. Yeah. A sutra is a, is a San, Sanskrit word. It's uh, used in the East, and uh, it it's basically a sutra is a small aphorism. <clears throat> and my understanding, and I'm not a language scholar, but my understanding was that uh, this is where we get our word, the English word suture. Okay. And so there's a really close connection between, believe it or not, between Sanskrit and uh, uh European languages. Mm -hmm. So you used to hear Indo-European languages or Proto-Indo-European. So there's, we're closer tied with, with that. It seems like the line should be drawn there and we're not the same, but Sanskrit uh, is, 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 in, has influenced quite a bit of English. And, and uh, as, as a matter of fact, with Sutra being part of Suture, holding something together or, and so because of that, these aphorisms will have, will flow most of the time. They'll put mm -hmm. them together, but they're very vague purposefully they're 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 vague you really a student could look at them and think about them but right. usually needs a teacher to walk him through it right and this is purposeful because they want a dialogue to happen between yes. the student and teacher because in the east you know the teaching was more uh you, the this teacher would sit there and the student would ask questions in the west the student shows up and the teacher kind of lectures mm-hmm on yeah, the right. whatever topics in the progression but uh, uh there you didn't you the 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 adage for them was you didn't teach unless you were asked interesting and, which is i think is a good that's still a good one to follow you yeah. know and uh so the student could only understand as far as that he could ask a question about it so the, okay. the teacher would wait so these but these these sutras gave a jump off point for mm -hmm. them to sit down and begin talking and then vague enough that there wasn't just one answer is the student evolved or even the teacher evolved we could bring these up again and again and again so the the notion of a sutra is um you know this teaching tool and it's been present in the world for many oh, thousands the, of years yes, right since the right. beginning of learning probably right. mm -hmm. um and so in your book you know light on the gentle art we have the jujitsu sutras which is designed in the same way mm -hmm. um and as somebody who's this book is by my bedside and <laughs> at the conclusion of my days, uh, particularly lately, you know, I'm, I'm picking up a, uh, the book and it's not, these sutras are not meant to be read. You don't read 10 pages of sutras. Right, you right, you right, read right. this small thing as a, as a way yeah. to focus in the absence yeah. of having you to be a teacher <laughs> at, uh, in the end of the day for me, I have your words to encourage yeah. a meditation for me. Yeah. Um, which is, which is something that, um, you know, I'm so grateful. And for those of you that I hope get the book, um, it has a relaxing quality to me in the sense that it, I feel like I'm being connected to something true. And there's something about that process of like, even if it makes me uncomfortable or whatnot, it feels like the time is connecting to principles that um, are important throughout all of my life. So there's a, it's a moment in which uh, it's helping me think about my work life, my family life, my mm -hmm. personal life, my jujitsu practice mm -hmm. itself. Mm -hmm. And and part of why we did this podcast is to kind of show the intersection of jujitsu uh, with the rest of your life. That, that practice mm -hmm. doesn't live just on the mats, but it lives off <laughs> right. the mats. 
Exactly. Well put. So there is so much wisdom. And today we're going to focus on two of the sutras. And if you have the book currently, we're going to focus on 1.19 and then 2.31. So we got a little bit of the chapter and verse style conversation here. But um, so, Professor Hawkins, I want to talk about the first one. And the title of this is The Outer uh, Space Reflects the Inner Space as the Inner Space Reflects the Outer. and um, I think there's a lot, well, clearly all these have a lot in there. Let me just read a couple of sentences from the suture. Then we can kind of um, go, go into, you know, t talking about it specifically. One of the sentences is clean and clearly defined lines in the training area produce clean, straight lines in the mind, promoting and supporting understanding and discernment. And then the other uh, section I underlined um, is there is power in consistency. It is the time component of locality. This refers to coming to the same space to practice again and again to unlock the power of a particular point in space. And so the, what I'm, in the most practical sense, what I hear is to organize your training to have it in something that allows your mind to not have to solve for where do I do what, when, you know, like mm -hmm. that there's a predictability to it, which allows you to think about the deeper things you need to learn. Mm -hmm. um, but there's also this component of uh, if things are messy in your life, that to, to bring things into a cleaner, straighter mm -hmm. point of view, uh, in both your external life and your internal life um, has creates value. So mm -hmm. I, I guess I want to ask you two questions um, about this is that how do you recognize when things are crooked? Like it may not be obvious to you that mm -hmm. like, Hey, I'm practicing in some place that doesn't have clean straight lines, mm -hmm. but it may be all, you know, yeah. um, and that I think, applies to how do you recognize other places in your life where things are not as tidy as they should be. So can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, you're right. And, and understanding, especially clarity of mind and, mm. and, and clarity of thought, it's not so clear sometimes, you know, we, <clears throat> if we, uh, if we come from a, a place to, of upheaval, that's not of our doing, or it doesn't seem like it's of our doing, you know, whether it's a work or family or something. And, uh, I think the best you can do and what, and this is what I think the Hatha yogis offered is they said, look, you, you probably can't know your mind that well. Okay. We're going to, we're going to say, Oh, can you that better, better. You probably can't know your mind very well. So let's start with something more concrete. Let's yes. start with the body. Yeah. So this is the definition of a Hatha yoga. Mm -hmm. And it's this Hatha is uh, the, the sun and the moon, right? Hatha is okay. the Sanskrit of the sun and the moon. And it, when you put them together, this word, it actually means force or violence, actually. So it's a forceful yoga. So what they mean by that is that I'm, I'm taking action. I'm right. putting my hands on this, right? I'm going to do something and, and move. And so that's just it. So there's something that must be irritating a little bit that makes you even think that like something's off. Kind of like, you know, right, get this yeah. matrixy, this, uh, you know, Neo type <laughs> feel like something's off. And so what the Hatha Yogi would say is just start to order things physically that you can actually deal with things that you can put your hands on right. and do. And the one thing that you can do, and then this kind of comes from, uh, uh, and funny, I, I didn't know this at the time. I, this is actually, there's a hermetic principle and uh, which is a, a philosophical, Western philosophical aspect. And the, there's a hermetic principle called uh, as above, so below, right. as within, so without. Right. This is kind of a famous axiom of, of this hermetic uh, mm -hmm. philosophy. Anyway, this is basically that reworded, I guess, in a way. So mm -hmm. if we can order our outer life, you know, right. then maybe we can create enough clarity to hear the message. Now, I had a I had a friend tell me one time that a, a well-ordered physical life is a well-ordered spiritual life that's interesting if, if someone uh, you know i had had a guy uh, used to train with me and was he was a good guy good still in good heart mm -hmm. and uh wanted to go do some help with people right but you know his car was broke down right 
he was having trouble holding a job. I was stuff, and he was telling me about all these things he was going to do for all these people. And I was like, man, you know, you get your car, get your car fixed, you know, get, you know, do, handle your, your, your self, your circle around you and deal with that. And then you can start helping other people. I, right. Pete, I used to, I'll tell you something funny. I used to do, I had a, when we first, when I first quit my job and do the martial arts, we had kind of like most businesses we were excited about you get this explosion of people right and sure. and this this uh, uh honeymoon phase where oh man just you know it's going and uh so i had this instructor's program that i was putting through and i still have it but i just don't do it on this scale anymore mm -hmm. and i just in my naivete i i said anybody can jump in here just anybody so everybody's lined up at the door like oh, i want to be a teacher i want to be a teacher i'm a teacher and i thought <laughs> oh my gosh okay so i got to come up and it's just more of these people wanting to dabble Sure. And just call themselves a teacher because it's a fun idea and all this kind of stuff. So I've got, I've got to narrow this down to people that are serious. And so most of them didn't have enough practice, didn't have enough physical practice and go long enough to be able to even share much of anything. Right. right. And they couldn't couldn't see this. And so I ended up getting a <laughs> I printed off the Internet, a sheet, you know, these sheets that that you have on the airplane the safety sheets on the That's airplane right. <laughs> and I printed off one and it was how to, you know, you put, you put your mask on in case of loss of oxygen. And then you put it on the kid right. beside you. And I kept it near my wall over there. And so I would do these interviews as people wanting to sign up, be an instructor. Right. And I would think, man, look. And so I would give them that. And I said, you gotta, you know, you gotta put your mask on first, right. make sure you're getting good oxygen and then put somebody else's <laughs> mask on. Otherwise you're, you're going to suffocate under all these people you know, putting masks on everybody else, but, in, you know, kind of in a funny way, I hope they got it, <laughs> but, but that's, that's the idea of starting first ordering yourself or the space that you're in at right. the very least yes. would be easy and then start ordering all those things. And, and, uh, this is a, this is an old concept. I want, you know, this idea of as above and, that, and there's other implications, obviously of that, but for, for most of us, mm -hmm. that's it, you know, um, well, right. The, there's that famous uh, book, uh, Make Your Bed, right? Adam yes, Mold, I was just right, I was about right? to I mean, that. that's yeah. exactly So he's it. like, hey, when you get up that's in the morning, make the bed. And it has this, for me, when we talk about Hatha Yoga, like starting with something you can touch and that is actually, you may feel like you're under duress doing physical things. Right. However, um, those things are easier than the than the things that you might wrestle right. internally with. And yes, because and you can- but this yeah, is yeah. more, but this is even more uh, immediate, you know, the making the bed is getting you started. You were talking about going to your academy or somewhere you train. Right. And those clean lines being there. Yes. To hold, uh, you know, one of my teachers told me, you know, he said, if, if it's cluttered in here, how are you going to hear me? That's right. Um, That's right. Teaching. You can't teach. Right. Yeah. I, and like, and even though we're not talking about blocking sound. Mm hmm that's not that's just the beginning of it you know you've got to process this and if if if, if the if the uh, academy is not and i don't know if you've seen our academy here on in pictures or anything mm -hmm. we're very fortunate i've been very lucky uh that you know through through the years i've been able to kind of when i moved i've been able to get a little closer to my idea of mm -hmm. what an academy should look like or the in the space of it and we're boy we're i don't know i could get even closer than i am right now i really love it but it's right. you know it really I wanted to be clean. My wife, it's funny. I, I think I can say this. She, uh, she's a little OCD. I think she'd go along with that. You know, okay. Okay. I'm not a doctor, but all right. <laughs> you know, okay. Yeah. And so used to, I used to get aggravated because when I first started this, you know, and you're so excited and everything, I was wanting, I was wanting to put up stuff all over the walls. I wanted to put this up and put sure, that up. Yeah, and, yeah. Obviously, and she was like, no way. We're not putting anything on there. And one of my instructors, we had a meeting over at our house and he said, man, I was so hoping to come over to your house and see stuff on the walls and call your wife out and go, see, look, you do it in your house, but you don't. And I said, I'm right. It's not here either. I said, I know. And I said, I don't want it to be like we're making, you know, uh, processors in here. I don't want it to be like completely sterile, right. but I do like the clean lines of the tatami mats. We have a, a, like a, a glass barn door that moves. There are these black straight lines. The, the sections are divided into the mat. It's one solid color. We've only used three colors in the academy of That's white, right. black, and green. Right. Those all reflect uh, something different. And I think all of these have some sort of even mild impact upon the attitude and mind of the, of the students walking in. With that, and, and how could it not? Right? And it vets, and I think it vets people. 
too. That's interesting. Yeah. Not, not that I'm trying to keep people out, but you know, it, it's not for everybody. Right. 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 So even within the martial arts community, there's sure. people that want different things and I'm not calling out and saying, Oh, well, you should be doing what I'm doing. I'm doing what I'm doing is the real way. Right. My way is a way. No, I understand. And yeah. if it's not for you, if it's not for you, don't, I don't certainly don't want you to waste your money here with me. You know, it's expensive and, and, you know, you should be getting what you want. However, um, I do believe at some point, if you go for a long period of time, you'll have to pass through something like this. Right? So let's, so we talk about the notion of the impact of space, the outer space having mm -hmm. the impact on the inner space. Mm -hmm. But as we say, you know, as without, so within mm -hmm. a person's inner space has its own organizational mm -hmm. principles. And in, in the, you know, we talk, you talk about this native American story in the no, sutra, yeah. Right? yeah. And so someone might organize their inner space in a way that keeps people at a distance, yes. um, right? And so they may need, for a variety of reasons, the protection yeah. of organizing their internal space to yeah. keep the, the those around them at a distance to protect them. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious about, um, as you, first of all, would have to be aware of whether you do that or not, mm -hmm. in the organization of somebody's um, internal lines. Um, is it always unique to the person or is there, um, is there a progression towards vulnerability to recognize oh, that like, absolutely, you know, vulnerability creates a fertile field to grow and absolutely. you are protected with distance. However, you lack some of the opportunities when right. you keep so much distance to people there. So I, right. I wanted to understand what you're talking about in perhaps the hollow body and the internal configuration of a person's uh -huh. uh, spaces and talk, and talk about that. I realize those are not exactly the, the same ideas, no, that's, but yeah, but the, 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 okay. So I went to, when I graduated college, I went to Japan for a little bit. I had a buddy that was teaching English as a second language mm -hmm. and boys worked out so great. And his brother wanted to go and said, okay, I can go too. So I go. And I got very curious while I was there. I spoke some Japanese. I'd taken some Japanese in college. And I thought, you know, I'm going to look up jujitsu. I, was, I wasn't studying Brazilian jujitsu at the time, but a Japanese style. And I thought, hmm. you know, I'm going to figure out what this means, this character of ju. So right. we all know it. Most of us know it as gentle or soft. But it also has another little connotation of uh, uh, allowing and subtlety mm, right? right this this allowing part of it i think is interesting and in what you're talking about because allowing to me includes some sort of vulnerability i agree i have to allow this energy to pass through me and at least close to me mm -hmm. and in that story you know she talked about having you know pushing people away keeping them outside this bubble right but then shrinking that bubble down so that it's very close now <clears throat> If we shrink that bubble down close to our skin and we still look at ourselves as a solid piece of material, then we're still losing space. We're, this person is still crushing us. Mm -hmm. But if I picture that my internal self is this hollow, vast space, mm -hmm. then I'm never going to run out of room. I'm never going to feel claustrophobic. I'm never going to feel thing. And that can man. I'm, I'm talking maybe literally to this feeling when you're yes. on the mat and somebody's on top of you. Right. Can I picture myself not as this bag of goo that's getting smashed? Although that's what yeah, it feels yeah. like. Yeah, that's for sure. Expect, but it's not that. It's this expansive feeling. And if you look back a little further into some Chinese martial arts traditions, there is a concept called Peng. Peng. P E N G. Okay. Uh -huh. The Taiji guys have developed it really well. And Pong is a very buoyant, spherical quality that they want you to develop through this practice. And you do, through a martial practice, you develop. If we never had this conversation, mm -hmm. you're developing it. If right. you're putting in practice mindfully, right. and you're developing this and you're able to hold it. And what I don't want is this collapse to completely happen. Okay. But, you know, if you're able to hold this buoyant energy with this person, it's all it's it's a safety. Okay. You know, I can redirect energy that's coming in on a, on a very real level from an attack. And, and I'm, my center is very hard to detect. Mm -hmm. But to me, it's very sure. It's a very reassuring, grounding feeling, but it's expansive. And I think that's what 
this idea of hollow body is trying to get the practitioner to use their imagination to at least create this sensation on some level. And then every time I come back to class, I, I do this again. And everything is a skill, right? Every time I come back, I imagine this. This sensation gets stronger. It gets more real. It feels better. And pretty soon, I am walking around this way. So, if I'm standing in line at Walmart, I feel this way. And so is can maybe you connect these ideas of like having a center, you mm -hmm. know, it, which is a, a solid place that mm -hmm. you practice from, mm -hmm. you know, work to the world there. And mm -hmm. then... But in a in a training session getting smashed, you know, mm -hmm. when you were um, having to have this imaginative quality that you're not getting smashed, yeah. something else is going on there. Yeah. But but that that's not that has mm, to that's, happen. That's, it has, you have to, you're getting smashed. Right, so right. You, you are right. I can assure you, you are. I'm getting yeah, so smashed. That's real. When I'm that's real. So yeah. we have to have we have to have these technical and structural things built into us yes. to go along with these sensations. My understanding is, and I'm, I'm for sure not there, but at a certain point, the structure matters less when these qualities truly present themselves and you're living them. Mm -hmm. However, in the beginning, not that way, and maybe right. not this yeah. lifetime, it won't be this way. Yeah. So we do have to have structure, but the more, if I develop this quality along with it, Pete, then it's the effort gets less and less. This, this idea of effortless effort because of uh, me coming back to this sensation again and again and again. But listen, if I don't understand how to move my hips, if I don't understand how to maintain good skeleton, how, how my skeleton yeah. relates, I had, uh, it might've been Hoist that, I don't know if Hoist told me this or something one time we were at this thing, it was, we were doing a lot of sparring or fighting or something. And there was some, I, I'm, at one time in my life, I was a smaller guy and, uh, and, and there were these big, you know, these bigger guys. And he said, listen, underneath all the muscles, tattoos, whatever you're looking at, there's a skeleton and that's right. what you're going to fight. That's you're interesting. Gonna, you're yeah. going to fight his skeleton, not the outer appearance. So you position yourself in relation to his skeleton. Right. And so once I do that, things become more lever oriented and things like this. Now there's other features obviously that comes in that your teacher has to help you with, but yeah. And then practice it, the practice itself. But, uh, I don't think they're, they're not, I think they can be developed in tandem. I, yeah. I mean, for, when I think about my observation of what you're saying, two things immediately come to mind, watching the competitions among master not master me older mm. white belts blue belts purple belts mm. like myself in a in a local tournament and watching the black belts the there is lots of activity mm. in the white you know in the mm. among the beginners like myself mm. and and very little effectiveness and then when i watch the black belts there is much less activity and much mm. more effectiveness right. um, you know and so for me part of what i hear when you say that is understanding what's going on at the skeletal level and, you mm -hmm. know, uh, in these techniques, mm -hmm. um, position you to express yourself with the greatest amount of power. And it, right. as you understand it more, you actually, uh, it becomes more elegant, much like the physical yes. space that you're describing. And you mm -hmm. come to right. your academy, there are three colors. Those yeah. three colors mean something. You come in right. there, clean, straight lines. We return to this because we mm -hmm. remove the distractions of all mm -hmm. the things that could be on the wall to focus on this thing. And yeah. so that elegance of movement um, then must somehow, Professor Hawkins, connect to some deep, something deep, something beyond the physical uh, because when I watch somebody move a much bigger person, Mikey mm -hmm. Musek, or who you might, who might you be so surprised that this, mm -hmm. you know, little person moves this giant person, mm -hmm. it can't just be about the muscle and bone. There's got to be other no. things going on, right? Yeah, there's other, and, and we're made up of different parts beyond the the physical physicality of the body and we could get into that and that's that you start getting into people's belief systems at that yeah, yeah. and how they look at it but i think we can agree there's something animating us right you know alive there's something, or whatever you want to call that there's something yeah. that, that and and that's kind of what we're talking about we're talking about this uh, uh this energy that's animating us that, that gives yes. us this life whatever it is and so you you know having having some some control over that right yes through some right. type of practice yes helps it come out because look the, the object is not for me to become calm in the dojo com 
completely and that's where I'm calm for an hour every week. Right. I want to be calm everywhere. Right. I want to take that thing, but I need a, a, a reasonable place starting point to get there. But I want to be able to, like I said, if I'm standing in line at Walmart and I don't want to be there and I don't want to be in this long line, I don't want to be sitting in traffic. I don't want to have this conversation. I right. don't want, you know, to, a lot of stuff. How do I connect to that inner tranquility that I've been developing by right. going to this place yes. that, that, that helps me by having these straight lines and quiet and thoughtfulness. And then I walk out of this thing. Right. You know, yeah, you have this, this time of concentration yes. that right. then allows you to be in to, a less concentrated, less time. concentrated area. Right. Yeah, yeah. Where, but, but you yeah. need to carry the principle. When you're being impinged upon, how do I, that's yeah. the question, right? How do yeah. I act then? Right. Right. And, um, that's, I have so many things I'd like to talk about that, but I want to, I want to bring us to the next suture that, that we're going to talk about. This is not in a sequential order. It's just the next, next one we're going to talk about, but it's, if you have the book, it's 2.31, but the, the title of it, uh, something that, um, I carry with me now, cause I think it's such a succinct way to express the idea. And the idea is force absent of skill is brutality. Now I've underlined pretty much the whole thing, so I'm going to pick out just a couple of things to to read to folks that don't have the book. Um, but utilizing brute force to achieve an objective violates the prime directive of jujitsu. It creates an imbalance in the body through a surplus of tension in the muscles, requiring more and more resources that diminish over time. Um, and I, I love this. You say that things are beautiful when they are done with minimal force maximum efficiency and a certain semestry. Um, mm -hmm. And I have other things that I want to uh, maybe read in, in a little bit. However, in a, a, other writings you have in the books, you talk about times in which you learn something. And when somebody uh, imposed their will on mm -hmm. you in a forceful manner to illustrate a technique, it always, in, your, in this particular bit of writing, um, never had you coming away instructed, but when somebody did something elegant and then caught you with this technique in a way that made it seem, uh, lack of a better term, magical, but you know, like it, it had a efficiency of movement and did not rely on the brutality of force. It stayed with you as an instruction. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's just so much to talk about that. Um, <laughs> And, and I, I don't know right where the right place is to start, but the first question I wrote down for myself is, how do we recognize in ourself when we are applying force without technique in a brutal manner, um, in, in both in training and without, you know, outside of training, um, but, th but those boundaries, because you come with a certain, a certain amount of aggressiveness is needed mm -hmm. to practice that has to, you have to bring some energy to it. It can't be you know, limp mm -hmm. and, and that this, we've talked a lot about this, like where are the, where in the spectrum of assertiveness, you know, do mm -hmm. you learn the most? Um, right. But that the, um, I don't know, I'd like to hear you talk a little bit about like developing your self-awareness of what are you really doing? Um, and then, you know, why is it so important to, to recognize uh, with the intent of becoming a better person and a better jujitsu uh, player, athlete, artist. I think that idea of, you know, when am I using too much force? That's a delicate question. I think we, you struggle with that all the way. I'm sure black belts mm -hmm. all, you know, I do, I struggle with it. Am I, did I force my way into that? Yeah. Or, or did I, was that, was that technical? But still, I think that there is something within us that uh, I like to call it the, your authentic self, mm -hmm. like the, your true self devoid of, all your yeah. propensities and yeah. personality, basically devoid, devoid, yeah. <laughs> devoid of that, this, this true part of yourself that survives everything. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I think, you know, we, we do have a connection to that. It can be obscured quite a bit, but if, if we're doing a martial art or something in order to improve ourselves, then you're reaching for it, you mm -hmm. know, and I think th not to sound too dramatic, but it's reaching for you as well. You know, and it's ever present, I believe. So when you have those moments for the obscurity, clear, you, you'll see it and feel it. And if you're really honest with yourself, and that's the thing, you have to kind of use this idea. There's a Sanskrit word called svidyaya. It's kind of funny where it says svidyaya. That means self-study. Oh, yes. And that can mean a couple of things. That can mean you actually get books and study yourself without a teacher telling you, or it can mean you're observing yourself. Right. 
and how you act. And so jujitsu, I think, on a level requires you to do that. Technically, I got to walk away from this and say, why did, why was I getting just hammered tonight? And I'm getting beat up and what am I doing wrong? There's Mm -hmm. that, but then there's also more of a subtle feeling like, did I, was I too brutal? You know, where that was, I using technique. It was, uh, you know, all this stuff. And so I think there's a sense of you when you, even when you catch somebody Mm -hmm. and you got it and you're kind of had this moment of proud, and you yes, got it right. Yeah. Still, if it was done just out of brute strength, right, 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 you get this little. That wasn't quite as cool as I thought it would be. Yeah, you know. And then when it happens in line, you know, it's it's not. It's a little deceptive. I don't want to be wrong to say you don't use force. You do use force, but it's in line. Yes. And and putting the force in the correct line, I believe, is skill. Yes. Right. So, right, line, right. so that's what changes force from brutality to a skillfulness to using it the right way. You, 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 uh, uh, I can't think the teacher, but it, you know, you, you still, you cut wood, but you cut it in with the grain. Yes. Right. Right. You know, there's a right way to do it. And when you do it yes. that right way, you're more in touch with authentic. If it's an art, if it's a jujitsu that has, you know, a good lineage and has good history and it's been around for a while. It's got a good, and they're teaching you good principles along with it while you're going, then you'll know that feeling. I call it the, uh, I can't remember what teacher told me this, but uh, I think it might've been some Russian guys I trained with use it, use the uh, term feeling of correctness. That's yeah. And, and, you know, at the beginning, we, we have to have the, what I call the memory of correctness. When your teacher shows you a move, you practice it and I memorize, this is the move. Well, that's no good when this guy's coming after you. <laughs> I can't go through the Rolodex and, yeah, yeah. oh, you know, he said this. It's a feeling. I'm shifting from my left brain, mm-hmm. how I learned it, to my right brain. Right. Not right in the sense of right. I understand. Left, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. My right brain, and, and which has to do with the feeling of, which, listen, is immediate. It's grounding. And most of all, it requires no evidence. The outcome is clear. Is that what you mean? Yeah. There's a knowing. Yeah. Yeah. There's no evidence required. The problem with that aspect of it that stumps people sometimes is that's not immediately reproducible. You're kind of like, how did, how'd that happen? And you can't teach someone else that the, the, the left brain skill Mm -hmm. I can repeat Right. And I can tell you how I did it. I did this, 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 and this. Okay. So now I know how to do a triangle perfectly. Right. Yes. Okay. We start to fight. You're completely resisting me now. I can't do I didn't catch the triangle. Why didn't I catch it? I wanted to catch it and I know how to do it. Right. But when everything lines up, the guy's posture was broken. Mm-hmm. Your hips were turned the right way. And all that came together at a single point in a fraction of a second and you executed it and you did it through a feeling of correctness right yeah. yeah yeah and i the uh in terms of well i'm i'm the, very far from being a teacher but when i see um a lot of struggle that uh is leaking efficiency mm-hmm. um then it feels like the in- the intent is to force the idea in the moment like if you're practice you feel like you have your triangle dialed in and the Mm -hmm. position doesn't call for the triangle but you got you You want to do a triangle this is is, (laughs) i'm here to do the triangle whether you're you know and that sort of mismatch between the the needs of the moment and what you're doing um Mm -hmm. i think is don't uh, line up don't line not up. lining up. Yeah. I, listen, I got when I was a brown belt. This I hate to admit this. <laughs> when I had my brown belt, I got one of the worst back injuries that I've ever had in my practice. Yeah. From I locked in a triangle mm-hmm. on a on a blue belt. Mm-hmm. And the truth was he had me stacked in the guard exactly like he was doing everything right. Right. But I had this tri- I had my foot <laughs> locked in. Right. And I'm like, no way. You know, is this blue belt passing my guard when I've got a triangle locked in, but he had stapled my shoulders to the mat, just like he was taught to. Right. And he was turning. Right. And so it's twisting my back. Yeah. Good Lord. Pop. Oh, and I was down for four months. Oh my goodness. You know what? I, I, des- I deserved every bit of it. 
<laughs> I, I can say that now. <laughs> I can say that now, Pete. I wouldn't know. I didn't say it back yeah, then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but now I'm like, Jason Hawkins, you deserved every second of that to think about that because that was pure unadulterated ego. Right. It kept your foot locked in. Mm hmm when you knew this technique was gone. That you is, know? that, that is so, it's so <laughs> powerful. Your ego at the, at the expense of your body. Right, right. In a practice itself, session. Right. In a with, practice, you, you, know, you know, like there, you nobody, know, you know, now nobody remembers that. And nobody, even if I tapped it. Nobody had a gun to a child somewhere and <laughs> right, says, if you exactly. let that triangle go, <laughs> this kid's getting the business here. The, <laughs> I, the, when I think about has my life unfolded as it should, you know, and I think about like my, my own immature conflicts with like, well, I would have liked this, this, and this to have happened. And, mm -hmm. you know, to think I know better than the divine about how my life should have unfolded. Yeah, right, right. When I think about jujitsu coming to me at 50, mm -hmm. the, the most likely analysis that I have in my conversation with the, the divine is that if I was 25, if I was 20, oh. <laughs> 20, 25, 30, yeah. I would have had injury after injury. Cause I would have oh. been like, does I can do this. It yeah. doesn't matter. This guy is bigger, stronger, whatever. Yeah. And I am going to show that I, I mean, my ego would have been so oh. much in the mix of this where now I have, I, my yeah, you know self-preservation yeah. is yeah, self-preservation is the first thing like hey if i'm going to learn this i'm going to have to just accept it's going to take a long time and we well, this did, did, did we talk did we talk about the you know st i think we did before about stages of life oh goodness yeah and being yeah, commensurate right. like getting i've talked about it in the book too having your mm -hmm. stage of life you're in commensurate with your training practice mm -hmm. and instead you know where you got this young student part of your life right. that is flexibility strength and sure you're exploring all that and going for it then your householder your primary concern is your health because mm -hmm. other people are depending on you sure and like and then you have this forest dweller where you're starting to back out and give other people responsibility and then they'll check in with you every once in a while does that sound right and yeah, then yeah if you live long enough you know in this ascetic life where you're you're pretty much cut off from uh you know public life mm -hmm. you still can be contacted but you're kind of at. and so and especially in the west it seems like here you know we want to hold on to that student phase as, as long <laughs> yeah, as we can right. yeah you know and not gracefully trans for i think older cultures than ours have a little more in tune with that and right and and i think that used to be taught maybe you know yeah that that, that thing is that things are not supposed to be the same i mean i think part of supposed you to know transition and yeah and that that's right and it's and, you, and that's attractive too. When you get in line with nature like that, people people can see it, and they know it. And you, you know, you see, you got people that that are that are maybe too in the in the householder or forest dweller stage, and they're still trying to act like a student. And it's just, oh God, you know. Yeah. I hope I'm not <laughs> well, doing you, that. You get hurt, yeah. right? I mean, get one hurt. Of the, yeah, one of the things hurt. that was a, just a, so yeah. eye opening. Yeah, as you did in that moment. Like yeah. Kyron Gracie came through, gave a seminar, and somebody yeah. asked about like, how do you keep from getting hurt he's like i'll tell you right now your injuries are generally your fault you know and, <laughs> oh, and it really took me aback because i'm always thinking oh you is know all these big else? strong guys in here and really like the way to protect myself is to not have an ego about that any particular moment yeah in the book I, I i talked about you know people wanting their black belt <laughs> and I, I said, listen, 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 that's fine. I know you, that's what you want. Everybody wants that and move that way. I said, but I, I told them, uh, I said, it, when you get it, right, everything will be your fault at that point. Everything. Yeah, yeah. Right. Like, what are you talking about? And I said, it'll all be your fault. Everybody getting hurt that's around you, you getting hurt, everything. Right. You're going to have to take responsibility for every, that's you putting that belt on is what you're saying. And if you think that's unfair, then don't. Right. Just don't. Yes. Put it on. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, right. Somebody asked uh, Joseph Campbell and I had a, you and I are both Joseph Campbell fans. I think. Yeah. And I had a, one of my police officer students come in and say that he was in a, some training. And he said, I want right. to know your opinion on this. He said, the word warrior got thrown around a whole lot this weekend, you know, just pitched around. Yeah. This and, that way, where, where. and he said, what, do you have a definition to your thing? I said, well, I don't have one that I came up with, but there's one I kind of think about. It's Joseph Campbell's. And he defined the warrior or the, you know, and the hero as someone that has taken full responsibility for themselves mm, nice <laughs> and that's the difference you know you're not carrying right. out necessarily someone else's will you've matured enough that you can carry out your own but but you're going to take the lumps for it you know 
Yeah. I think that's important. It's and super. Yeah. Without a doubt. Maturity. That's the maturity of the belt. Yeah. I, the mature. Yeah. And so as being able to recognize your behavior as a, when you're practicing your jujitsu and when you're in, in your life, being able to have the self-study that leads you to, I'm doing these out of, uh, I'm forcing things. I'm not forcing things. I'm refining my technique. I'm taking advantage of, you know, the imbalance between my strength and the opponents or so on and so forth. Um, to me, it talks about this notion of creating alignment in yourself. So you, as you are aware of what you're doing, you then can make adjustments. Um, and those adjustments create uh the power, like a lot of strength and power. And so in a practical sense, when, you know, Hoist talks about like, look, it's your skeleton against the person's skeleton. And when your bones are in alignment and, you know, you now have levers that are moving efficiently, those levers are as they're designed to be, they're stronger than moving something that's, that's uh, there. Um, and so when you think about the alignment that happens over time with this repetition of practice, when this, um, you know, what, what does it look like in its most strongest evolved, format? Evolved yeah, like, state, yeah. Yeah. It's most evolved state. Like what are we going for here? Um, yeah, I think, like, I think the alignment with, with your surroundings and mm -hmm. like I said, cutting with the grain. Yeah. And move, you know, I think a good way to come at some of this is, did I use too much strength? And the answer is always yes. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you, yeah, I did. Is there a more efficient way to do this? Yes, right. there is. I mean, I would hate to think that I hit it on the head, you know, and <laughs> didn't have it. But, but that alignment, I think when you come in and practice that alignment mm -hmm. with your partner with no resistance, let's say. Right. So we have like soft work and hard work. Right. And we do this software. What's the benefit of that? Mm -hmm. Well, that soft work allows me to understand not, not only Pete, not only alignment, it helps me understand misalignment. Here's something that people don't think about in jujitsu. I think sometimes is when you're receiving the technique, mm -hmm. so the Japanese call that the uke, right? Mm -hmm. It's receiving the technique. It's easy to check out because I'm not practicing. Right. Right. Yes. Is. Yes. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you that's when some of the best, knowledge and ability will come to you when you're receiving the technique that's why it's hard to catch a black belt right. he's been putting that arm lock so long so many times right, right you know through practice that the body has adapted the the fascia mm -hmm. because he's misaligned right so he's actually practiced in that state because listen if you're going to fight somebody it's not a probability that you'll be misaligned it is a certainty right at some point in the conflict absolutely you're, it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So the question becomes not how strong am I when I'm aligned? We're all strong when we're aligned. How strong are you when you're misaligned? Right. That's the weak link. And yeah. I have to develop it. That takes a lot of focus. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to be careful. You have to move slowly. You're in the realm of injury. Yes. You're living there. So if you're letting someone else do this to your body, your partner, like I'm going to let you do this arm lock on me. I'm in the realm of injury. So we have to trust each other to do that. One person is practicing what's it like to be misaligned. The other person is practicing what is it like to be aligned. That's we are this yes. yin and yang right. that are going to help each other. And we got to trust each other, right? But as that, if, if, if I have a good partner and he, he, he puts this lock and I allow him to go slowly and I kind of go a little bit, you can call it a stretch or whatever you want to call sure. it. But that fascia around that, because your skeletal muscle is not helping anymore, right? That's the point of, an, of a joint lock. Right. To fatigue or remove. If he can still use his skeletal muscle, he can push back. Right. It's no longer helping. Right, so right. So I'm only left with the connective tissue. And, uh, and so if I can train that over time to be somewhat resistance, not in a brutal way, right. but in a soft way, and it happens. You felt when you roll with a black belt, you know, if he's been around for a while, that's a completely different feel. Yeah. It feels different. Yeah. It's not, yeah, it's, not I, a, it's not a, it's not a direct force. It's this kind of a, like I was talking about that, that buoyant, it's almost like a buoyant feel when you're, mm -hmm. when you're working with them, you know, it's interesting. Yeah. It's but a I flow think, of sorts, right? I mean, yeah, I mean, people like yeah, that there's, word. There's no, there's no good place to put yourself. 
with the, with somebody that's that's good like I, this nothing feels comfortable yeah, <laughs> yeah. like, like yeah. My, my even if i get a decent position you're like something's wrong yeah yeah you know? i don't he have knows what i what think i have yeah i don't have what i think i have and that yeah. could be self-talk but more than likely if the guy's good there's something that he's undermining well, well, right. And I think there's degrees of alignment, right? Like you, right. you know, we've talked about this before. Uh, let's say there's, you know, I love this story you told me. We got, we're watching two, two different couples, tango dancers. Yeah, right. right. And one <laughs> tango dancers, they know how to do it and they learned it in a moment. They just had natural skills and bam. Right. And right. then the other group's been practicing for 30 years yeah. Yeah. and they do it and they both do it with equal excellence. Would you know right. the difference between the two? Yeah. When I, I, um, We've had some people come in that have been, you know, to do a seminar and they may have been black belts for 25, 30 years. Mm -hmm. And so the, the length of time that they have with a continual, you know, uh, education of the body on how to do mm -hmm. when watch their knowledge of where their body is relative to the rest of us who may come in to yeah. roll with them. There's just things that they know. In, intuitively intuitively yeah, it's not in there it's not in that's there it's the feeling right that's yeah the right it's in their lizard brain they're not yeah. accessing the they're not the thinking brain. about it they're, they're just doing it, it. and just they can it. feel it um i feel like that principle as it relates to things outside of jujitsu has the same like idea if the outcome of the conversation you know leaves uh where there's less harmony than at the beginning of the conversation, mm -hmm. then probably there was more brutality, more brutality. than there was yeah. technique and skill yeah. and, the form you know, of injury. a it's form a of injury. Of injury. Yes. Yeah. And I, and I think <clears throat> in a world that sometimes values this notion of, of uh, tough love type of things, mm -hmm. I think it's not that you can't set boundaries with people and can't have difficult yeah. conversations, but um, I think the most skilled humans in the world have a sense of doing that in a way that as you come out of the conversation, things are stronger than when you went into, in, in some way, shape or form. Right. Not that there are not hard things to talk about with right. people, but um, all things can be handled with different levels of skill. Absolutely. And how do you recognize if you're getting more skillful, <laughs> things are better when you come out of it than when you came into it. Right. You know, I, this is my opinion, at least. Leave it better. Yeah. That's Leave true. it better. Right. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Man. Well, I, you know, that I can talk to you for like 20, <laughs> well, 30 same, hours at a time. So same. we can pull a Joe Rogan and do a four hours. Yeah. Sometime. And maybe, <laughs> and maybe we will someday, but yeah. t today leave it better is about as good. And yeah, that's good. As leave it better. That's a good, that's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> good one. Tell, tell everybody where to get this incredible book. Where, if they, they want to go uh, buy you. You can get it on Amazon, a uh, lot on the gentle art uh, on Amazon. You can also, if you're in, if you happen to be passing through or in the little town of Paducah, Kentucky, in the western end of the state, if you're driving between St. Louis and Nashville, you probably go through. Okay. And, uh, you're welcome to stick your head in and say hi to us or train with us a little bit. Absolutely. Okay. Do you sell it on your own website or only through Amazon right no, now? No, just through Amazon. Just through Amazon. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, it's something I'm reading every day. So, awesome. uh, Professor Hawkins, as always. Thank you, Pete. I, I just love talking to you. I we'll do too, you. man. Thank we'll you again for the opportunity. Thank you, sir.